Andy, uh, did you hear that the whistle? I sure do, Amos. That whistle means rinse so white, rinse so bright, rinse so new. Yeah, that's right, and it means that this is Sunday and we're on the air for 1950 Rinso with Solium. <laughs> Show with Ernestine Wade, Lou Lubin, Johnny Lee, Willard Waterman, Jeff Alexander, and his orchestra, and radio's all time favorites, Amos and Andy. Yes, sir, the Amos and Andy Show brought to you by Lieber Brothers Company, makers of new 1950 rinse sole with solium, the soap that gets your clothes whiter and brighter than new. Rinse so white, rinse so white, rinse so new. Happy Little Wash Day song. Last year at the Thanksgiving celebration at Sapphire's mother's house, George Kingfish Stevens surprised the 22 assembled relatives by getting to his feet and making the following irrevocable statement. Yes, folks. I am telling each and every one of you sweet people that one year from today, you was all invited to my house for a big Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> well, another year has rolled around, and once again, the happy Thanksgiving season is here. And this morning, when Sapphire reminded the kingfish of his invitation, he turned to his wife and said sweetly, What have them 22 vultures here for Thanksgiving? I won't have them. I'll commit suicide first. <laughs> You done invited them here, and they're coming. And that's all there is to it. Well, now, listen, Sapphire, we can't feed that mob of gluttons. Gluttons? Why, at Mama's house last year, they all had perfect manners. Perfect manners, huh? Why, when that food come on, they charge for the table like Notre Dame's backfield. <laughs> George, you're getting all worked up over nothing. If we get a 15-pound turkey, that'll be plenty. Not if your mama's dad won't. <laughs> 15-pound turkey is just like one order to that old local. <laughs> George, you can complain all you want, but you is the one that invited my relatives. Now, what you gonna do about it? Well, maybe we can take them out to eat. Take them out to eat? Why could you take 22 people? Well, I might be able to make reservations at the Salvation Army. I don't know. <laughs> now, listen, George, we gonna have dinner here at home, and you is gonna provide the dinner, and that's fine. Well, now, wait a minute, Sapphire. Huh? George, I want to start off the meal with a shrimp cocktail. Then salad, cranberry sauce, candied yams, mince pie, pumpkin pie, and a nice turkey. Yeah, well, you're going to have to get a pretty light turkey, because all I got is a dollar and a quarter, I tell you. <laughs> Joy Stevens, this is one thing you ain't getting out of. I ain't going to be embarrassed in front of my relatives. Now, you get out of here and find some way to get us a Thanksgiving dinner. There's going to be fireworks, and not because it's the Fourth of July. Do you care that? You're no good loafing bum. I'm going to the bedroom. <laughs> Holy smokes, why did I have to marry a woman with a Dynaflo mouth? I didn't... <laughs> well, come on, Anna. Let's walk on down to the lodge hall. Okay, King Chris. You was really upset about your in-laws coming, ain't you? Oh, yeah, Anna, yeah. I'm really in trouble already. I got a pre-motor Thanksgiving dinner by Thursday. Yeah, well, with all them relatives coming, I guess you ain't got no oil tourniquet. <laughs> well, uh, I wish it never started this Thanksgiving thing in the first place. If them pilgrims had only stayed back in Siberia where they belong, we wouldn't be... <laughs> I guess that Paul Revere is much to blame as anybody. <laughs> Riding around town on a horse shouting, The Pilgrims is coming. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of the thing, all right. Then on Thanksgiving Day, the Pilgrims they asked all the in-laws to come in, and then they went out and shot turkeys for them. Yeah. And that's where they made the mistake. Yeah. They had any sense to have shot the in-laws instead. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a nice custom to carry on through the years. Kingfish, if you has got to feed all them in-laws... Hey, did you see the way that truck skidded around the corner? To... Sure did. Hey, wait a minute, Anna. Now, where are you going, Kingfish? A package just fell off the back of that truck. Let me get it. Yeah, go ahead, get it. So what is it, Kingfish? What you got? Hey, wait a minute, Anna. Wait a minute, there's a little hole in the wrapping paper here. Let me take a squint inside. Well... Andy. Andy, you won't believe what's in there. The hand of fate just slipped me a turkey. A turkey? Yeah, it's all cooked and everything. 
All you got to do is to heat it. Come on, Ed. Let's take it into the large hall here while I'll get my bearings here. Yeah, let me see the thing. Yeah, go ahead. Peek through the little hole in the bag. Yeah, it's all done up in wax paper. Look at that. Oh, look at that, boy. He has a golden brown. Yeah, come on in the large hall here and let's close the door. Well, Andy, that was a lucky break. And I can't take the turkey back because the truck went by so fast that neither one of us see the name on it to tell who the thing belongs to. You see, we can't. It was Thompson's marker. I say we can't. <laughs> we can't. Uh... You got a Dynaflo mouth, too, ain't you? <laughs> Listen, all I say was it was Thompson's Market. I didn't hear a word you say and stop hollering Thompson's Market at me. <laughs> Didn't nobody see nothing. The address was 487 West 135th Street. Listen, Andy. And the telephone number was Lehigh 59256. <laughs> Listen, Andy, did you ever hear the old saying, speech is silver and silence is gold? Yeah, I hear that. Well, why don't you put your big mouth back on the gold standard then? <laughs> I can tell you is what I see with my own eyes. I see the truck. You know what happened to you, don't you? What? You don't see the mirage. A mirage? What is that? Well, that's a common thing, and uh, like when you was out on the desert, you see something there that ain't there. That's all. Well, if it ain't there, how do you see it? Well, uh, binoculars. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I never thought of that. That's right. Yeah. But it's still kind of funny that I see the truck with letters on it nearly a foot high. Yeah, yeah, funny all right, yeah. But you say that that was a mirage that skidded around that corner, huh? Show was a big one. Yeah, well, and uh, there's bigger mirages than that. There is? Yeah, you take one of them steamships that cruises around the world that I heard about. Did one of them tropical islands in the Pacific. The passengers went ashore, danced with the natives, picked bananas off the trees, ate coconuts, and spent two glorious weeks at the place before they found out there was no island there at all. Yeah, well, that show makes this truck mirage look like nothing. Oh, yeah, and, uh, and now that I have convinced you that you didn't see what you saw, now, let me figure out uh, where I'm going to keep this turkey. I wonder if you would mind keeping it in your icebox, then. Well, wait a minute, Jerry. What's the matter with that refrigerator you got, Kingfish? Well, I tell you, and I, I had a little difference of opinion with the electric company about two months ago, and they done severed my connection. That, that's what it is. Okay, then. I'll keep it for you. But, Kingfish, I still don't think you're doing the right thing keeping the turkey that don't belong to you. That's liable to start bothering your conscience. Well, then, uh, I just convinced you that neither one of us know where it come from. Yeah, well, I know that we don't know where it come from. Yeah, well, then, uh, what did you expect me to do? Why don't you take it back to Thompson's Mirage on 135th Street? <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, and I ain't had a wink of sleep yet. I don't know why I can't sleep. All my problems are solved. I got that turkey and everything. Why can't I sleep? I'll tell you why you can't sleep, George. Who that? <laughs> it's me, George, your conscience. Conscience, what are you bothering me for now? Oh, it's that turkey, George. You know it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Thompson's Market. And mark my words, if you insist on keeping that turkey, you'll never be able to enjoy it. I won't be able to enjoy that turkey. Kind of drink, got as much sense as I thought you had. <laughs> and another thing, George, it's little things like taking a turkey that doesn't belong to you that lead to bigger things. This may well be your first step toward a life of crime. Yeah, but you don't understand, conscience. On one side, there might be a life of crime. But on the other side, I'd have to face 22 of my wife's relatives without no turkey. They give Joan Ark a better deal than that. You know. All right, all right, George, have it your way. But remember what I said about starting a life of crime. One of these days, you'll find yourself in a big gray building with bars on it. You, you mean they'll put me in a... Yes, and it won't be a mirage either. Oh, no. <laughs> Happy little wash tastes long For a wash that's whiter and brighter than new Rinse-O washes, rinse-O new Rinse-O white, whiter than new Rinse-O white, 
brighter than new. Rinso, 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 rinso new. Rinso new. It's an amazing fact. 1950 Rinso with Solium gets white clothes whiter, washable colors brighter than new. Rinso new. Even on rainy days, Rinso puts sunshine in your wash. No other soap can make your wash so white, so bright, because no other soap contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. 1950 Rinso gets out more dirt. Yes, gets out more dirt than any other type of wash day product. And yet Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to your hands. Get Rinso today. See your wash become whiter, brighter than new. Rinso, Rinso, Rinso new. That's the little wash day song. feel so tired today. I guess it's because I didn't get no sleep last night with that conscience bothering me. Well, come in, Shorty. Greetings of the holiday season. Yeah, yeah. Happy Easter. I mean, Merry Christmas. I mean, Happy New Year. That is, you can't... When I, 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 what day is it? <laughs> well, Thanksgiving is the one I was talking about, Shorty. And oh. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you know, I was in a mess about the thing, too. You see, I done something uh, a little wrong, and all last night a voice kept nagging at me, keeping me awake and making me miserable. Yeah, Pinchy, you, you ought to put a muzzle on that sapphire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, Shorty, no, no. I tell you what, uh, it was just, uh, just my conscience that was bothering me. Well, what was that bothering you for? Yeah, well, the, the gust of the thing is uh, that I, I found a turkey... And, well, uh, I didn't know what to do about it, so uh, my conscience wants me to return the thing, you see. Mm -hmm. And the thing that really got me, Shorty, is that my conscience said to me that a little thing like taking a turkey, just taking one turkey now, mm -hmm. might lead to a life of crime. You think there's any truth to that, Shorty? Oh, yeah. yeah that, 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 that's where it is in life. That's where it is in life, Pinky. The, 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 little, the little, little things uh, lead up to bigger things. <laughs> Yeah, look, just look what happened to, to my father. Yeah, well, uh, what happened there? What oh, was... one day, Papa, Papa, he, he went into a market, and, and, and while the clerk, uh, clerk wasn't looking, he took a can of sardines, and the next day he took a jar of pickles, and from there he went on to take, he take, take him Swiss cheese, liverwurst, salami, smoked tongue, and whole ham. <laughs> Holy smoke. He took all that stuff. What finally happened to him? Oh, well, he, he, he went to the police. Uh, uh, he gave himself up to the detail. Uh, he, 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 he decided to come clean with it, but he, he uh, 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 opened the delicatessen. <laughs> Conscience bothering me half the night. I didn't get much sleep. I gonna see if I can catch a little cat nap on the sofa here. I lay down here in the large hall and take a little nap. Hmm. Turkey leading to a life of crime. That's the craziest thing I ever hear. Oh, oh, oh. I better get some sleep here and forget about that crime stuff. After all, it could never happen to me. Life of crime. Life of crime. Calling all cars, pick up George Stevens for turkey snatching. Calling all cars, pick up George Stevens for jewelry store robbery. Calling all cars, pick up George Stevens for armed bank holdup. Calling all cars, pick up George Stevens for blowing up Fort Knox, shoot on sight. Stevens, come out of that alley. We got you covered. I ain't coming out. You'll never take me. I won't confess. I won't confess. Where do I sign, fellas? <laughs> Gentlemen of the jury... You have reached a verdict in the case of the state of New York versus Mad Dog Stevens. <laughs> Foreman Amos Jones, what is your verdict? Well, we find the defendant guilty on all counts and recommend the death penalty. 
Was the jury's decision unanimous? Well, we had no disagreement uh, except one there. Uh, six of us wanted to hang him and six of us wanted to burn him. <laughs> Amos, Amos, you can't do this to me. The prisoner will please stand in front of the bench while the judge pronounces sentence. George Stevens, are you ready for me to pass sentence? Why, well, where's Sapphire, the judge? You have been duly convicted by a jury of 12 turkeys, and I hereby sentence you to be taken to Thompson's Market, where on January 15th at 8 o'clock in the evening, you will be put to death in the electric chair. Tickets now on sale at the box office. <laughs> oh, no, Sapphire. Not the chair, not the chair. Oh, it's you, Warden. Don't just stand there. Say something to me. Hello. <laughs> Andy, you the Warden. Yeah, what about it? Andy, you got to help me. Look, they ain't fooling. They has already slipped my pants leg. What's next, Andy? What's next? Well, we usual shaves the top of the prisoner's head, but you got a pretty clean job there today. <laughs> Ain't there nothing you can do for me? Well, I got a little surprise for you, Mad Dog. I was going to give you the juice at 8 o'clock, but I got you an hour's stay of execution. Yeah, well, got some hope. What did I get to stay for? Well, I'm going to watch television tonight, and I don't want the tube to go dim during Arthur Godfrey. <laughs> oh, Why did I ever start off by taking the turkey? Well, it's too late now, and I got to run along, too. I got to speak to the reporters that's going to cover the thing for the papers. Yeah, what are you going to speak to them about? Oh, I'm going to tell them to control their laughing and giggling during the festivities. <laughs> All right, guard, you can bring in the prisoner's last meal. Oh, me, my last meal. What is it, guard? Well, it's, it's going to be pork and it's going to be fine. Uh, nice, nice baked Virginia uh, 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 roast turkey with Thompson dressing. <laughs> No, no. I don't want no turkey. Take it away. Take it. Uh oh. Huh. What a terrible dream that was. Two minutes more and I woke up dead. <laughs> oh, me. I don't know whether to give up the turkey or face them 22 relatives. I don't know what to do. Uh, hi, Kingfish. Hand to you just the man I want to see. You sure is a fine pal. Well, what's the matter, Kingfish? Watching television while I'm sitting there burning in the electric chair. Andy, don't ever speak to me again. This is Ken Carpenter. You know, friends, I'm not easily amazed, but here's something that never fails to impress me. A wash done with new 1950 Rinso turns out not just whiter, but whiter than new, and washable colors brighter than new, because only Rinso contains solium. Now, it's a proven fact that no other soap can get your wash so white or colors so bright. Your clothes turn out Rinso new. Why, you know, even on rainy days, even if you have to dry your wash indoors, wonderful Rinso with solium puts sunshine in your wash. 1950 Rinso gets out more dirt than any other type of wash day product. Yet Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to your hands. You better stop in at the store and get the economical giant size of new 1950 Rinso with solium. And then see for yourself what an amazingly beautiful wash new Rinso gives you. <laughs> Get on into Calhoun's office here. I got to do something about that turkey. I couldn't stand no more of them awful dreams. Hello there, Calhoun. Be with you in a minute, Kingfish. I'm just dictating a letter here to my secretary. Uh. <clears throat> and so, gentlemen, if you will take care of this matter referred to above, I'm sure we can come to terms which will be mutually satisfactory. Yo! Very truly, Al Gonquin J. Calhoun. Uh, wait a minute, Calhoun. Uh, who is you dictating this letter to? Ain't nobody here but the two of us. Well, I'm a doggone. I keep forgetting that gal quit this morning. 
Uh, Calhoun, uh, the reason I come to see you, I really in a dilemma here today. Uh, what's it about, Kingfish? Yeah, well, now look, I, I found a turkey that didn't belong to me, and my conscience is telling me to take it back. So on one side, I got my conscience bothering me, and on the other side, I got a 15-pound turkey. Now, what would you do in a spot like that with a turkey? Set the oven at 470 degrees and baste it every hour. <laughs> But you see, my conscience won't let me do it. Well, tell me this. Does you know who really owned the turkey? Well, I guess I dug the horses myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, Thompson's Market. Well, the only thing I can see for you to do, do Kingfish, is to raise the money and then pay Thompson. Yeah, but who I going to raise the money from? That's the problem. Well, Andy Brown is your best friend, ain't he? Yeah, he's the best friend of the guy. Well, what good is a friend if you can't jip him? That's it. Uh, that's what I'll do. I'll figure out some way to get the money from Andy. Well, if I don't see you for the next few days, Kingfish, I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, thank you. Why are you eating Thanksgiving, Calhoun? Well, you see, uh, every Thanksgiving for the past three years, I've been taking the turkey up to my girlfriend's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, she really loves it. She always so grateful when I bring the turkey that she throws her arms around me and we smooch for an hour. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, but you know something? I got a faint suspicion that gal is cheating on me. What you mean? I looked in the icebox last night and... And there was 18 turkeys. <laughs> well, I'll get in Anna's room here. That saying to Calhoun, what good is a friend if you can't jip him, sound like an old proverb of mine. Come in. Oh, hi, King Fish. Yeah, well, hello there, brother. Anna, glad to see you, pal. Glad to see you. Uh, well... What are you doing sitting down in the chair there, Brother Andy? Oh, I'll be with you in a minute, Chair. Yeah. You know, I've been walking around all day, and I just changed my socks. Hmm, changing your socks, huh? Yeah, I'm changing the right one to the left foot and the left one to the right. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I guess, uh, that's good already. Rotating the socks is a good idea. Yeah, then the hole don't always come up on the big toe, do it? <laughs> Uh, what you doing? Did you come up here to get your turkey out of my icebox? Uh, not yet, sure, Andy, old pal, my friend. Uh, I just come up here to cheer you up, poor lonesome boy. To cheer me up? Yeah, let me put my arm around you here. I love yeah, you, Andy. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, you know, me and Sapphire was talking about you this morning. Mm -hmm. Talking about how sad it is that you got to spend this gay holiday season all by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I got all choked up. It you did, huh? Oh, yeah. I blubbered so much at breakfast, I cried right in my plate. Oh, man. Yeah, my tears filled up all them little squares in my waffle I was eating. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's a sad thing, ain't it? You being all alone in this miserable room here. Yeah, what is you driving at, Kingfish? Well, then, uh, I was extenuating you an uh, invitation to have Thanksgiving dinner with us. No fooling. You mean you want me to come up to your place for Thanksgiving dinner? Yeah, then, uh, I'm inviting you in consideration of our long friendship, hmm. our lifelong association, and a small sum of fifteen dollars. Yeah, fifteen dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, Kingfish, when you start slapping me on the back, sooner or later your hand always slips down to my wallet. Well, now wait a minute, Dan. Think of what you're getting for your money. That fifteen dollars entitles you to a turkey, cranberry sauce, all the fixings. Plus the love and affection of 22 genuine relatives. That's what you get. The love and affection of 22 relatives. Yeah, that's right. They all deal maul all over you just like you was one of the family. Yes, sir. Yeah, not only that, Andrew, but your 15 bucks entitles you to a ringside seat for the carving, too. Ringside seat? That's right, Andrew. You'll be right up there with the breast and the second joint set. Not back in the bleachers with the stuffing and gravy crowd. <laughs> I tell you, Kingfish, I'd like to come, but tell you the truth, I only got a couple of dollars to tide me over the holidays. Only got two dollars? Yeah, that's all. Well, you wouldn't enjoy it anyway, and uh, <laughs> I tell you what, uh, you just bring the turkey by at one o'clock on Thursday, come to the back door, and then be on your way. Yeah, but wait a minute, Kingfish. What is I going to do for Thanksgiving? I ain't got no place to go. Well, the best thing for you to do is drop down to the mission, 
You liable to run into some other penniless bum down there, and the two of us can be thankful together. See you later. Happy Thanksgiving, man. <laughs> well, I done made an honest effort to raise the money to pay back Thompson's market. Now, it ain't my fault that Andy didn't have no money. I'll just keep that turkey, and my conscience is clear. George. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's you again, conscience. You're not doing the right thing. Take that turkey back to Thompson's market. Now, wait a minute now, conscience. Uh, why do you make such a fuss about it? After all, I'll be eating for you, too. <laughs> no, no, George. No, you've got to listen to me. Well, now, listen. Now, I'm going to do what I want to do. All right, all right, George, but mark my words. You'll never be able to enjoy that turkey. You'll never enjoy it. Hmm. What did that conscience know? Anyway, I was in the clear. Even if Thompson didn't miss the turkey, ain't nobody gonna find out I had it. When them 22 relatives get through with that bird, there ain't even gonna be no caucus delecti. I know. <laughs> I see all the relatives is in there. Oh, yeah, George. They all showed up, all 22 of them. Yeah, they sure was a mess of them, all right. I just walked through the living room. They all perched up there like a pack of timber wolves. <laughs> what time did you say Andy would be here with the turkey? Well, I told him to be over here at 1 o'clock. He ought to have been here five minutes ago. Now, wait a minute. That's him at the back door now. Wait a minute. I, I, I'll open the door and let him in there. Oh, Brother Andy. Hi, King Fish. Hi. Yeah, well, I see you got the turkey there. <laughs> And my conscience say that I ain't going to enjoy this thing. Now, give me that turkey, Andy. And you get on down to the mission before they run out of beans, Andy. Uh, you know something, Kingfish? I've been thinking. The other day when you found this turkey, you say that truck that fell off was just a mirage. Yeah, that's right, Andy. Mirages is a common thing, all right. It certainly is. And you've got another mirage on your hands. What you mean, Andy? Well, this ain't no real turkey. This is one of them plastic jobs the market decorates the window with. Happy <laughs> That's just as good as a box of Rinso for washing clothes? Certainly. Another box of Rinso. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Millions of women say there's nothing like Rinso. And today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. 1950 Rinso with Solium actually gets your white clothes whiter than new and washable colors brighter than new. Your wash is Rinso new. Rinso is great for dishes, too. It makes the hardest part of dishwashing easier. Pots and pans really shine. Get the economical giant size Rinso with a red Solium label. Good night, folks. See you next Sunday. Be sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of new Rinso with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Life Boy gets skin cleaner, gives you longer all-over protection after your daily bath. Remember, there's not just one or two, but 13 areas of the skin where doctors have found B.O. Life Boy protects you all over, gives you top 24-hour security. Get Life Boy right away. Be sure and listen to the Amos and Andy Show at this same time next Sunday. And stay tuned for the Edgar Bergen Charlie McCarthy Show, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.